Welcome in, everybody. I'm Joey. So I was screwing around in the Forza GT hopper, taking this beautiful Ford Falcon out for a spin, and stumbled upon this rowdy bunch of knuckleheads who couldn't manage to cross the start line without 360 no-scoping each other. So if we add it up, I think it was a grand total of 30 feet we covered before the Forza fuckery got started, which of course is very fortunate for us because that just gives Forza more time to make other things go wrong the rest of the race, but everything was okay through turn one at least. Turn two, not so much. This Golden Rat Ferrari, a telltale sign of elite driver ability by the way, well, basically refused to acknowledge the BMW on the inside and went sliding off track. The guy must be watching my videos because that is a spitting image of my driving technique and what I usually like to do is then blame the other driver, rage quit, and then go get another beer because I guess that usually results in a more positive attitude most of the time. Other times I need something like an extended break or something because I need a little more time to recoup. No recouping needed in this race so far. We've managed to get up from 20th into 15th and now 14th as we go around that right-hand bend on the inside, side by side with that BMW. That was some good racing from the both of us. This time, going back to the left, I almost get turned around. That was one of those situations where I did leave space, but it wasn't a whole lot. He apologized, so how could I be mad? After all, I could be this guy who just took a Lambo to the face. There is no apology. That will make that any better. Honestly, I think the only valid excuse there is if there were like intruders coming in the room and you had to set the controller down to go John Wick the shit out of them, but I think that's about it. Oh, and then here's a Corvette spinning back onto the track, pushing me off it, and then of course, I get two and a quarter seconds for it. Now, you know damn well I was going to check the tape on this one. So let me show you the horse manure that is this crash. Mid-spin, there's a random or like sudden burst of speed into my path. The guy is a fucking heat-seeking missile. I'm no conspiracy theorist, okay? But if I was to say aliens exist, all birds are drones, and these devs are out to get me, I don't think I'd be too far off. Jokes aside, he probably just put it in reverse. But at the same time, these damn devs are out to get me. That Lexus might also be out to get me now as I replied with a stern no to his attempted move up the inside on the straight. We'll go ahead and get the job done on that Corvette and into turn one. The Mustang and the Huracan give each other some warm greetings. I'll happily take those spots. Heading into turn two now, I'm thinking we've got some prime opportunities for some easy overtakes on this straight. This Falcon is heavy on the acceleration top speed side of things and not so heavy, a little light, I would say, through the handling. As you can see here, the Falcon is just making these GT cars look like field mice. That Viper never stood a chance. Into the braking zone though, we're gonna need to brake a little earlier than they do and I think that Viper back there got caught out a little by just how early I needed to. So I got pushed wide, not too happy about it. In fact, a little peed off, but Road America, there are plenty of straights and we can get this move done quickly again. I'll make my move here on the back end of lap two, bullying my way up the inside of the dog leg to the left, getting alongside and then in front through the braking zone, staying behind the Ferrari, nipping at his heels. And as we accelerate out, fifth place is ours. So far, it's actually been a pretty steady diet of overtakes, and I haven't lost too much time to the leader. In fact, I've actually cut it down by a little more than a second. So at the end of lap three, start of lap four, I'll pass another Corvette, and then we'll skip to the end of lap four. This is where my tires started to really degrade, and it's time to say hello to the good old boys in the crew. So the good news is I went four laps on these mediums. Our second stint is also gonna be on mediums, but I'll only need to go three laps. So for the most part, our tires are gonna be healthy the rest of the way. I headed back out onto the track in eighth, and if you caught it, when I dipped into the pits, there was one guy that stayed out, and that was Vegas, who's now leading the race. So chances are he's on the hard tire now, He's going to go one extra lap and then pit for soft tires. Ideally, what's going to happen is I get past this BMW now, which we do. I'll have some clean air, put in a decent lap, and then beat Vegas 
to turn one when he's coming out of the pits next lap. But, of course, it's Forza, and a Ferrari roadblock appears. This guy hasn't pit yet, and he's really struggling for grip on those old tires. I'm beating him around the carousel in this Falcon, which should not be happening. We're drag racing it to the right-hand kink. I don't adjust my line. Run over the grass. That's going to push me wide, and I've definitely lost a couple of tenths or more from that. Because I'm a total noob, and the BMW let me know too, because he ran into my rear end with about twice the speed I was carrying. Here, the Ferrari makes his final appearance. Everyone can wave goodbye to him and his non-existent tires. So the total noob will finish off lap five and kick off lap six. We'll see if we can beat Vegas out of the pits and into turn one. There he is in the Huracan, and we just missed out. It was a couple of tenths. I think if I didn't turn the car into a lawnmower, I would have had the chance to get around them, but it still would have been a super close one. I should still be able to get past him once I put the power down on this straight, but it would have been nice to get past him earlier. He is in one of the strongest cars in the class on soft tires. So it's just going to be tough to keep him behind no matter what. Pulling over to the left, the Ford making it look easy. Pedal to the floor, we're by him. Who's the noob now? It's still me, because later that lap, into the braking zone off of the dogleg, I'll go a couple feet wide of the apex and then the Lamborghini right up the inside. That superior grip on those soft tires, able to carry quite a bit more speed through there. And he makes me look like that noob again. So here it goes, start of the final lap once we get around this final corner of the Lamborghini on the outside. Doesn't look to have too much grip either, and he'll probably head into the pits now. Luckily I slipped by him, because dude was struggling, but this starts the final lap. I'm in fourth place, the only one up front with a penalty, and it's a pretty hefty one. That two and a quarter does not look nice. I'd be a little more worried if I was the leader though. He hasn't pit yet, so this is gonna be a tough lap for him, and he's already given up first place and kind of slowed me down through turn one so I'll just file back in to fourth place and just hope to get them all on this straight once again for the seventh and final time. This straight really has been the bunny maker. This is where I've done most of the overtaking. Hopefully we can recreate that here. Easily around the Corvette moving back over to the Huracan to get that slipstream pulling over to the left once again we're by him, and it's going to be a battle in the braking zone, and he's just going to make me look like an absolute noob again. Embarrassing the balls off of me. I've quickly given up second place, now back down into third, and through these next couple of corners, I realized my race isn't going to be for second or first place. It's going to be with fourth place for that last podium spot. So as the leaders are pulling away, I'm immediately starting to pay a little bit more attention to the time gap to fourth place. It's at about a second. We're coming up to the carousel, though, and I know I'm not going to be able to carry the same amount of speed he is through there. I think this is the guy in the BMW behind me. He should start to pull closer, that gap at 1.1 second. Does it drop down to one second? It does, but we're back on the power on the straight, and that'll start going up slightly. But I'm starting to get nervous because I need a full extra second, and there's not a whole lot of corners left. Got to risk it for the biscuit, give it everything this Falcon's got. Looking for that first board on the left, breaking on it. Down in the second gear, coming around the corner. Back tires are squirming. I'm over the grass. The car's a damn lawnmower again. I forgot what episode it is. That was last episode. We're not in the Bugatti tractor. The guy behind's within a couple of tents. Everything's become a total mess. I'll need a miracle around the final corner if I want to grab, what do I need, a second and a half now? to get back up into third. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. I moved out of the slipstream for shits and giggles. Wasn't going to be enough, and we'll finish there, but it was actually a super fun race. Started in 20th, finished in fourth, which could have been a third if it wasn't for that BS penalty because the devs are all out to get me, allegedly, and the fastest lap, too. So I think we did the Falcon proud. Now, just wanted to end the video on a couple of fun clips I got starting things off at Laguna Seca and I know what you're thinking Joey why would you choose the Falcon on a handling oriented circuit in the pouring rain that's so dumb and the answer to that is I'm a complete idiot but also this car is so much fun to drive and I can't recommend you try it enough it's one of the most fun cars in the class the Aussies did well with this one to all of our surprise, I've survived this long, but turn three had other plans. The 4GT gets up on the curve, loses traction, swerves to the right, and at this point, we've pretty much come to an agreement. 
I'm gonna pile drive him directly into these tires. I bounce out into the track and nearly die. I was half an inch away from taking out everyone else behind me. So all things considered, I was feeling pretty lucky until that luck changed and the Porsche is over on the left side playing in the sand. One of them hits the wall, hits me, and now I'm off playing in the sand too. At this point, I was just laughing my ass off. You can't even be mad about this stuff. The start was so bad. Probably one of the worst I've had. So, can you really be mad? Yeah, I guess you can, but that one, I laughed off, and then here was another funny one. So, it's the final lap of Watkins Glen. I've got more penalty time than the Cadillac in front of me, so I need to pass him if I want a chance of getting fourth place or even third place. Although, that's a bit of a long shot. I'll try to round the outside of the Cadillac through the heel of the boot. That gives me the inside position for the next corner. I accidentally shift down into first gear, definitely losing some time from that and not making the guy behind me very happy. He's pushing me along, letting me know I need to pick up the pace. The penultimate corner is where things get chippy. I get a tap from the Cadillac, my back end gets loose, another couple of bumps, and what do you know, I wind up leaving some paint on the wall. But it actually wound up being a really cool moment because I got to cross the line side by side with one of you guys. The Nine King, he sent me a message, a really nice message before the race about the videos. And so it was very fitting that we got to cross the finish line together. It kind of felt like when the GT40s crossed the line at Le Mans side by side, except here we got fifth and seventh place. So it's uh, kind of a little different when you don't win the race, but um, still, it was a pretty cool moment. That'll do it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, do all the stuff the YouTubers tell you to do at the ends of videos, and I will talk to you soon. Alrighty, bye everybody.